loved it, loved it. And then after after you did the audition, what what killed it for me? What 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 gave you the job was uh, Blitzen. Oh, I howled and laughing at Blitzen. I made Blitzen German. Yeah, uh, yeah, brilliant. brilliant. It still makes me laugh now. Do you mean when you when you wrote the the reindeer parts? Then you didn't really think of what their voices would sound like. No, it never it never <coughs> sorry it never occurred to me they could be multinational. Right. I, I, no, in in your head they're all they're all English. Right. Uh, they, they, you know they, they'd all they'd all got my voice. Right. So, uh, yeah. When you came along and characterised them and. Uh, uh, oh, Blit, Blitz and I was, well, we were, we were both sat here, nearly crying. We were, oh, it was funny. Well, all I had was the words on the page, and I wanted them all to sound different so that when each one was speaking, you knew that it was a different one. Because yeah. I think that's one of the things with an audio book is you, the listener has to know that a different character is speaking now. Oh, I mean, yeah. you're going to go, you know, Blitzen said or Donna said or Cupid said after it, but you've got, you only get that afterwards. You've got to know when you hear the words first. Yeah. Um, which one it is and so when I got to them all I've got is the name to work on and it said Blitzen and I thought that sounds kind of German <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking of like something horrible like Blitzkrieg or something you know but so I got to anyway so I thought oh well I'll try it because I tried a few out with each one until yeah. I found the ones that I thought delivered the lines the funniest yeah. you know so the farting was it Donna the farting one Oh yeah, was yeah. like was like oh pardon. I, it just do you know like uh, what was that show? Was it? I didn't know you cared. And there was a bloke. There was Stavely was a character on old northern sitcom, and and he used to go. I heard that pardon, and <laughs> and so I had I had pardon in there, and I yeah. thought well I'll I'll nick a bit of that, and and that yeah. so I got that one for that. And Cupid sounded like a bit more, a bit more kind of um, flamboyant. So yeah. then Cupid speaks like that, you know, like almost like like uh, like like a Kenny Everett type character, you know, yeah. almost oh, yeah. like that. Who had a who had a character called Cupid, funnily enough, but nothing like this Cupid, nothing like. But and it was it was a bit like that. And then Blitzen, I made Blitzen made and and he's very it's not you know it's not funny you know because. Things are happening to Blitz and and Rudolph can't help it and God knows and he's like so that was that they, they all kind of um, they all kind of came together and Santa's sleigh came hurtling towards the Robinsons' house. It shot past, did a sharp turn round, and came skidding onto the roof with Santa pulling wildly on the reins and all the reindeer digging their hooves in trying to stop. As they did. They slid along the roof and finally stopped. Rudolph's nose hit the chimney and all the other reindeer skidded and crashed into the back of him. The reindeer all shouted as heads and feet and antlers stuck into each other's bottoms. Ooh, ah, oh, what's where you're sticking your antlers? Rudolph at the front could be heard shouting. Oh, my poor nose, not again. No wonder it was red. While all this was going on, Santa at the back was thrown out of his sleigh. He fell onto the roof, which he rolled down and fell off into a large snowdrift with a dull ploof. He got up and brushed off the snow and pulled his tunic straight. Santa then looked up at the roof. Well done, lads. That was quite a good landing that time. Rudolph was rubbing his sore nose and Blitzen was still protesting that Comet had jabbed him in the bum on purpose. Hey, chill out, man, it's cool, said Comet. No, it's not, said Blitzen. It's painful. I told you the old fool had drunk too many of those sherries people leave for him, said Cupid. Well, he can't leave them or the mince pies people would be upset, said Donna. It's me that should be upset. I have to go behind Donna every year, said Blitzen. I can't help it. It's all those mince pies he keeps giving us. Huh? Pardon me, said Donna. Glyn Davies, how are you? Oh, oh dear, that's a good start. I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, just, you know, you're talking to a bloke here who uses his voice for a living. We don't want any of that kind of carry-on to start off the chat. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. This is actually the first time we've spoken when we could see each other, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see the face on the end of the phone. Yeah, it's nice to see you too. I, of course, I have seen your face because you did uh, a very successful interview with American television that, uh, that I had a look at. And uh, yeah, that was the first time I'd seen you, but this is the first time we've actually, we spoke yeah. on the phone yeah. as we were, as I was narrating the book for you, uh, Santa's Disastrous Delivery. We're going to get to the book in just a little bit, but first of all, I want to get a bit of background. Where are you, Glyn? Uh, we're just outside uh, Sleaford in uh, Lincolnshire. Right. Little, and little uh, little village. Why are you there? Because you don't have a Lincolnshire accent. I was born and bred in Wolverhampton at one time, but I've lost most of my accent now. <laughs> uh, you can hardly tell it at all. You sound so <laughs> posh. That's what I was saying. You sound way too posh for Lincolnshire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so are you, are you a Wolves fan? Uh, I'm not. I'm not a big football man, to be. Honest. I'm more rugby. Oh, good, because I'm a Liverpool fan, and you just battered us last week, so I wouldn't <laughs> want to talk about that. Oh, we were humiliated. <laughs> well, the last the last the last Wolves match I went to, Derek Dugan played for them. Okay, uh, that was a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a huge football fan, but I do. If if I if if I check on anything, I, I like to see how they've gone on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't get all upset if they've lost. You don't. Okay, you you get over it. All right. Well, yeah. Well, they beat Liverpool, and uh, was well. We were humiliated by them. Um, we did nothing at the. We were all over the place at the back and couldn't finish at the front. And I don't know what the midfield were doing, but it, it wasn't it wasn't good. So, when you lived in the West Midlands. You were not a world famous author back then. You were um, you were a, quite a successful truck driver. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, that's probably been the latter part of my career. Of, of, oh, really? How did you start out then? What were you doing after you left school? Let's go right back to the beginning of that. Where's where's the influence for, for an author come from? Um, oh, sorry, that's better. Bit of a cold. Um, yeah, I started life actually as a mechanic. My dad, dad had a garage, a uh, Volvo agency out in the sticks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I went, went to work for him, uh, learnt my trade as, uh, as a mechanic. Um, and I suppose it's, it's, I suppose it's a bit sad in a way, but like a lot of um, father-son relationships, we, we got on okay, but didn't get on that well so okay. in the end, i decided to uh um venture into other parts but, working uh, for your dad would have must have been i couldn't i could not even imagine working with my dad i mean he's gone now um i mean i worked on the same construction site as him but i didn't work for him if you know yeah. what i mean uh, but I, I couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine that so if for someone who who writes children's books, and I know that you know when we were talking when we were doing the book that you were originally telling this story, Santa's Dis disastrous delivery, and the one before that, Trevor the Tractor. You were you were originally telling the story, or you made up the story for your daughter Chloe. So it sounds like you've got a great relationship with Chloe, but are you saying you didn't necessarily have a relationship as good as that with your dad? Or was it just when you were working with him or was it when you were a kid as well? No, I was, uh, I suppose, I was, but when I, I was sort of born in the 50s, it was a different era then. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, ooh, yeah. I, I he it, it was a working man. He, 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 he was always at work. Um, not the most sociable of people. It's <laughs> not bad now slagging him off all well. Um, um, yeah, we got we got on okay, but but yeah. you know. But would he read? Would he read to you? Oh no, no. Okay, right. No, was, uh, How about your mum? Did your mum read to you? Um, no, no, not really. So different, diff different, different age back then. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And now, because this would be a cracking book 
you know, I don't have any kids, but I would love to read this book to kids <laughs> because it's just so much fun. Well, you know, I enjoyed it as we were as we were going along. In fact, when I first did the audition, I had to keep re-recording it because I had to stop because I was laughing. <laughs> it was the farting reindeer that got me every time. And um uh, yeah, it's it's so it's so much fun. And when you were when you were originally telling the story to Chloe, who was laughing more, her or you? Was she getting all the jokes in it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, how uh, old was she? Oh, like okay, um, four or five. Okay, uh, we we we've got we've got twins by then. Uh, who they'd be too they'd be too small to understand. About yeah. farm reindeer and a and a and a uh, an out of control Santa. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, it, it 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 sort of blossomed from there. Then um, work and life gets in the way, and it's all got. I did I did try several well known publishers, and I got yeah. some lovely feedback saying it was a, it was a good story, and it was and it was funny, and it's written well, and but it, it I never seemed to find anybody where. It either fitted in with their publishing schedule, or they didn't do children's books. So right. you get a bit, you get a bit dejected. Oh, you know, well, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not good enough, and it, and it goes. No, that's the... showbiz, Glenn. It's all about being rejected. Trust me. <laughs> more than yeah. more than half of the too many radio stations I worked for fired me. So that's all how it goes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean. So, so how many times would you say you got knocked back then? Oh crikey! Um, um, I've, I've got a folder just over there, and with, with about at, at least six or seven um, publisher rejects. You know, that's so, not that many. Well, that's really well, that's not that many. Stuff, uh, you, you think? Well, well, J.K. Rowling got knocked back about one hundred and fifty times. Yeah. So it. It sort of spurs you on a bit till till you get knocked back again. You think, oh god, you know, well, I've, I really need to be out earning a living and doing looking yeah. after kids and this needs doing and yeah, got to go to work. So it, it it sort of got forgotten about uh, until until oh, a few years back when uh, Amazon came along, and then I realised I could possibly self-publish with that. Yeah, and, um, and I, I did I did look into that. For a short time and then you realize don't it. don't tell people when they when 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 you say i've got a book published and they say oh who's the publisher don't yeah. don't ever say I, I i recommend to authors to never say it's self-published i yeah. reckon you need to say it's independently published oh well, that's yeah because yeah. it just sounds bigger because <laughs> people who are buying them on amazon they don't care well, it's, it's a good story it's a good story so yeah. why talk it down talk it up <laughs> plus, you, plus, you get more royalties if you do it yourself. You get a bigger well, percentage. Yeah. No, there's all, there's all these people on the way you're having a piece of it. Yeah. So you decided. What did you have to wait till you retired then before you you decided to independently publish it? Um, well, I say life gets in the way, and I'm, yeah. I am a, I am a, well, I'm still working now. Uh, I am yeah. a committed workaholic. So there's always there's always seems to be something that's more important. Um, yeah. So yeah, it it, it 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 used to come out every now and again, every couple of years, and you you try again, full of enthusiasm. You get knocked back, and then you oh, okay, okay, well I'll I'll try again a bit later on, and then yeah. it gets forgotten about again. But, uh, the yeah, thing uh, is, though, that the first book, Trevor the Tractor. You actually put that together in your head while you were at work, didn't you? Yes, that that came. Well, I had the idea for a while because I don't want to be disrespectful to to, to other authors. There are some excellent books and some and some far better authors than me. But it, oh, I think you're right up there. When the kids were little, you they probably have, or Chloe had probably. I don't know, three, four, maybe five book favourite books to read at bedtime, and you take her up. Either myself or June to take her up, and you go right. What book do I want to know? Oh, can I have 
whatever it was, the favourite book, and you and you go, oh yeah, okay, yeah, lovely, and and inside you'd be thinking, oh no, please, not this again. <laughs> and what was the problem with those books, Glenn? Oh, they were either, they were either they were either too silly, too 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 childish. Yeah. Ooh. Billy, Billy's going off to town with uh, with Pinky Winky to buy some sweeties. And you think, oh, no, no, I could write better than this. Right. And so uh, I was working as a truck driver at the time, working nights, and uh, I, br I broke down. I, I, I said this on the other interview. But I, I broke down just outside Leicester and... Uh, Rang them up, said, truck's broken, the engine's making some terrible noises. So, they well, wait there, then we'll come and get you recovered. So, you're sitting there in the pitch black, in the dark, thinking, well, they're talking about a couple of hours. And I'd had this idea, and I thought, well, I'll make a start. And, and I wrote the first line, and the, and the story just wrote itself. It's not a huge, it's only a small children's bedtime story. But, yeah. Uh, the story just wrote itself. Uh, perhaps is a bit worrying, really, when you you think what's what you know what's what's coming out of there just off the top of your head, you know. But uh, yeah, I was yeah I was, I was quite I was quite pleased with that, and uh, um, that and that gave me the inspiration for having a go at Santa, which, which again was another again driving. You get a lot of time to think on nights because you either you either driving up the motorway and there's just nobody about or yeah. you're either parked on a base somewhere either waiting to unload or get a load so you spend hours just sat in the cab yeah and uh, it yeah it was it was it was coming up to christmas and um you, you're thinking about different things and the kids and um it used to be um the when, when i was little it was a tradition we'd leave um, a glass of sherry and a mince pie for Santa. I think with our kids it was a carrot. But yeah. uh, and then you, uh, I started to think, well, if Santa drinks all this, sh you know, the amount of people, if he drinks all this sherry, it's going to be what a hell of a state by the end of the night. Yeah. And I started to think about this completely drunk Santa, and, uh, and then you start to think, well. You can't write a children's story about a drunk Santa. Well, I thought, well, it could, it could be a complete and utter bumbling idiot, which, yeah. which is inspiration for it. And, and again, the, the story just came to me. And the more, the more I wrote it, the more ridiculous it got. It, 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 it sort of, um, it just spurred me on to think of something even more ridiculous. But, uh, yeah. yeah it, yeah, it made made me laugh while I was while I was uh, writing it. But uh, it uh, sounds a bit sad, really, that doesn't it? But no, not at all. Uh, it has to be said that in this book, Santa doesn't exactly cover himself in glory. Um, <laughs> but but he's he's an in, he's he's innocent. He's not he's not malicious. But the thing that makes it work, I think, is because I mean I don't want to give too much of the book away, but he's. He's trying to get into the house and the police show up and think he's a burglar. And he doesn't, you can tell that Santa doesn't understand why the police would think he's a burglar. Well, the thing is, Santa doesn't live in the real world. He lives in the, in the North Pole. So <laughs> he's, not, he's not up with what goes on, you know, and he's getting on a bit now. And so, so it still all makes sense. It's, Santa hasn't broken character here in your book. Yeah. He's, it still makes perfect sense, but you still you still like him. He comes across still as likable because there's an innocence <laughs> to him, even though he is a bit daft in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But he is he is he, he is great, and it's the, the one of the great things about this book is it uh, it never lets up. I mean, things just keep happening. And getting more and more out of control because there's magic in it, and things are going things are going horribly wrong and getting worse and worse and worse. It's just complete mayhem. 
<laughs> did you approach it that way or was it when you started putting it together you had an idea oh this could happen as well <laughs> put that in there how did that did you did you go like i want the story to be like just chaos or did you end it did it become chaos the more you put in no it it, it started off <clears throat> i thought to myself well i wanted to answer a few questions and that why why does nobody ever see santa why is that because everybody's asleep and why are they asleep hence the stardust and yes. then um uh why is rudolph's nose always red because everybody speaks rudolph the red nosed reindeer but why why is it red so that that gave me the idea of, of putting putting that scenario in and, yeah uh, so the more the more i thought about it um just just the ridiculous situation came to me when the, and the, and the, there's lots of things um um lo lots of things I, I probably thought about or dragged up out of the the recesses of my mind from probably 40 years ago just just little bits it's, it's surprising what's in there you know it's fact it's a bit scary really <laughs> but, but um yeah, some some of it, um, some of it had an idea to start with how I wanted it to how I wanted it to play out, and then what one thing led to another, and you think, well, if that if that's going on, well, well, round the back they could be doing this, and if they're doing that, uh, well, well, this this could be going on, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the more the more ridiculous it got, the more the more ideas came came to my mind. It was yeah. You know, uh, yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and yeah, I actually wrote it quite quickly, which sounds a bit big headed, but but um, not at all. Yeah, no. that, uh, yeah, yeah. I, was I mean, that. I've I've narrated quite a few children's books. I've mostly done adult books, but I've done quite a few children's books, and yours is so well written. You know, there's all the funny bits and the thing and the chaos and all the rest of it. But it does have a structure to it. It has a very clear beginning, middle, and an end. And the beginning hooks you like it should. And the middle expands on the idea. And then the end tucks everything in nicely with a punchline at the end, almost like that little button they put at the end of American sitcoms where it all everything tucks in at the end. It does that. Did you have any training in, in how to write with you know, because they say you know, with writing, a lot of it is learning the importance of structure. Did you have any training in in writing? No, no. I've always, I've always enjoyed writing. I've got, I've got ter terrible, terrible. I've got terrible handwriting. People say, "God, you a doctor? Are you a doctor?" <laughs> uh, I, I've even, I've even struggled to read some of my own from like twenty years ago. Take it uh, down the chemist; they can read it. <laughs> If it doesn't, I'll probably come back with a treatment for growing <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I've yeah. always, yeah, I've always, I've always enjoyed dabbling in writing and and. Um, so how uh, did you get that structure down? Because you know, for me to say this thing's got chaos, but it's got structure. <laughs> are, the, are the kids' books you've read and gone? Oh, I like the way that that goes bump, ba bump, ba bump, and then tucks in at the end, or, or what? How did how did you um, get to there with I, no I, I idea? Tried, I, 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 as I, as I wrote it, I, I tried to think of um, how how it should come about and why why it should happen, and if if, if this does this, how how am I gonna how am I gonna link that into that? So it it right. was, um, I don't really know is the, is the answer. <laughs> well, that it, it probably just means you're a natural, Glenn. That's probably what it means. Well, you know, well, I think that's probably stretching it a bit. A bit. I, I think what what's made the difference is that you are actually telling the story to somebody you loved very much and wanted to entertain them. So oh, that, you know, that, you know, it's not like you're a kid's author and you've got another book to do. It's like the original idea was trying to entertain someone you wanted to entertain. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted, I wanted to. I, I, 
just I just love putting a smile on the face, making them laugh. But, yeah, uh, I think I'm probably a bit of a uh, uh, a frustrated stand-up comedian. Although I could never do it; it would terrify me. Yeah. But, uh, have you ever had a go at it? What stand-up comedy? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. I I can confidently say. Um, it is very difficult because I have failed miserably at it multiple times. Um, and the worst time was when I got a bit full of myself and I'd done a couple of, I lived in the Northeast and I'd done a couple of gigs at a pub up there, open mics, and a couple of them had gone quite well, I thought. And I was about to go to a convention, a radio convention in Denver. So I rang up a comedy club there and told them I was a British comedian and could I do a spot? <laughs> Oops. And foolishly, they gave me one. Yeah. And uh, me and a couple of other people who were American DJs who I met at this convention, we ran out of there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it went horribly wrong. Oh, dear. Horribly wrong. I won't bore you with the full story, but the place itself was scary. It was neck. It was between a liquor store and a gun shop. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so if you are going down that road, Glenn, if you want to expand that way, don't take any advice from me. Stay away. Cause I do not know. I'm a worthless failure at that particular discipline. So I would stick with the writing cause your writing is superb. And the whole package is good too, because your brother did the artwork, didn't he? Which is handy. Yeah, yeah. Rob's uh, Rob's retired now. He was uh, uh, well. He still he still does some now. Um, he, he started off as a commercial artist, and then got a bit got a bit bored, a bit frustrated with that, um, and and started um, on illustrating, and uh, it's been very successful. He's done a lot of. Uh, a lot of well-known books for, for, for a lot of the big um, publishers. Uh, so, yeah, well. so, so, what's that? Sorry. Oh, you're getting prompted there by June, are you? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's just off camera. Just off there. camera, making sure you don't say anything too embarrassing. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> Unfortunately, Julie's not here to stop me doing the same thing. So... So I'm flying without a net. You're looking after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? You you just you just rang him up and said, "Look, I've got this. I've got this." But it would have been Trevor first, wouldn't it? Trevor the tractor first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he'd known about it. But I say, blimey! I think I wrote Trevor must be forty years ago. Right. Thirty-five. Um, and that's was... a nice book too about a tractor that. Prefers to be in the showroom than on the farm. Just great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I just had the vision of this uh, this rather self-important tractor, the biggest, <laughs> toughest, strongest tractor in the world. It was a bit, and he, he was shocked to find himself on the farm. Didn't um, like the farm. Didn't like animals. <laughs> uh, I just had fun with the relationship between himself and Bert the bulldozer. Yeah, yeah. No, that is a, that is a good one. But for for me, it, it's Santa's disastrous delivery because I got to have fun pretending to be the characters. And like I say, the farting reindeer that was just so hard to get through. Even you know after the audition, even when I was doing it for real, it was still like, you know, come on, put yourself together. You got to get this out there because. <laughs> We gotta get this. Gotta get this book finished. How many times have I done this line? And the thing is, I've got to do the line, but still make it sound funny, you know, but yeah. without laughing, you know, because yeah. you can make you can do it without laughing if you read it like it's not funny, and you know. Yeah. But I didn't want to do that. You got to make it so it's still funny, and then pull the mic down so you can't hear me laughing, and then go back and edit from then on. <laughs> How did you find the process of turning your work into an audio book? Um, oh, blow! It, it, it was it was hard work to start with. It was a bit, bit extreme fish out of water time, right? But, um, yeah, the more the, the more I delved into it, the, the easier it became. And uh, when uh, when when we come to do when you come to do um, 
um, Trevor, that will be a, a, lot, a lot easier. But, yeah. Uh, what uh, was what was the challenge then? Get getting to for anyone who's an author now and they've got a book or books out and they're thinking of turning them into audio books. What 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 was the thing that you had to get over or get right or make work to to make it happen? Uh, oh, blimey, God, I think no, there was, there was, at the time there just seemed so many obstacles because you got venturing into the unknown. I suppose looking back now, it was a lot simpler than what I thought it was. Or, okay. You know, the right. One, the second one will be less scary. Yes. So yeah. It was. It was um, what. What I. What I did find um, hard work was the amount. The amount of um, um, auditions that came through. Yeah. Uh, oh dear. Some of them. Some of them have really worked. They, they really. They really shouldn't try. But there was an awful lot that were just. They were just reading the book. Here's Trevor the tractor, and he lives on a farm, and it's and it's really boring. And my God, kids, you must be asleep by now. Right. So you 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 listen to about the first sentence, and go no, delete no. Um, yeah. And I think I think we had about oh sixty. Wow, and that's I'd, a lot. Almost, I'd almost given up, and I I did have one other chap in mind, and then yours popped up. Um, or right at the last minute, yeah, and, uh, yeah, loved it, loved it. And then after after you did the audition, what what killed it for me? What 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 gave you the job was uh, Blitzen. Oh, how old were laughing at Blitzen? I made Blitzen uh, German. Yeah, uh, yeah, really, really, it still makes me laugh now. Do you mean when you when you wrote the the reindeer parts? Then you didn't really think of what their voices would sound like. No, it never it never <coughs> sorry it never occurred to me they could be multinational. Right. I, no, in in your head they're all they're all English. Right. Uh, the, the, you know they all they'd all got my voice. Right. So, uh, yeah, when you came along and characterised them and. Uh, uh, oh, blip, blips, and I was well. We were we both sat here, nearly crying. It was, oh, it was funny. Well, all I had was the words on the page, and I wanted them all to sound different, so that when each one was speaking, you knew that it was a different one. Because yeah. I think that's one of the things with an audio book is you, the listener has to know that a different character is speaking now. Oh, I yeah. mean, you're going to go, you know, Blitz and said, or Donna said, or Cupid said after it, but you've got you only get that afterwards. You've got to know when you hear the words first. Yeah. Um, which one it is and so when I got to them all I've got is the name to work on and it said Blitzen and I thought that sounds kind of German <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking of like something horrible like Blitzkrieg or something you know but I got to but anyway so I thought oh well, I'll try it because I tried a few out with each one until yeah. I found the ones that I thought delivered the lines the funniest yeah. you know so the farting was it Donna the farting one Oh yeah, it was yeah. like was like oh pardon. I it just do you know like uh, what was that show? Was it? I didn't know you cared. And there was a bloke. There was Stavely was a character on old northern sitcom, and and he used to go. I heard that pardon, and <laughs> and so I had I had pardon in there, and I yeah. thought well I'll I'll nick a bit of that, and and that yeah. so I got that one for that. And Cupid sounded like a bit more, a bit more kind of um, flamboyant. So yeah. then Cupid speaks like that, you know, like almost like, like, uh, like, like a Kenny Everett type character, you know, yeah. almost oh, yeah. like that. Who had a, who had a character called Cupid, funnily enough, but nothing like this Cupid, nothing like, but, and it was, it was a bit like that. And then Blitzen, I made Blitzen made, and, and he's very, it's not, you know, it's not funny, you know, because things are happening to blitz and and rudolph can't help it and god knows and it's like so that was that they, they all kind of um they all kind of came together did we change could did we change any of them as we went or did i get them all how you wanted them i can't remember with them oh, i can't did we change any of the characters no no i think because I think because we, we could have done. I probably, I probably should have told you that about it. You could have changed any you wanted and gone. Can you make him a bit more serious, or can you make him French? I mean, we could have done that if you wanted to. I don't think we did, did we? No, no, no. Paul's happy. There was, some, there was a couple of the uh, 
uh, expressions. Um, I can't think what it was now. We just. Uh, there, there were a couple of times I think I remember when uh, you wanted me to sell the line a bit more. Like if somebody said something and they were surprised, you wanted me to sound more surprised no, when they delivered the line. And, you know, so um, you gave really good direction, actually. I think there was only three or four of those in the whole book, but we got them right in the end, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and through. that was all part of the fun of it because it was <laughs> such a fun book to do. And uh, and working with you was really good as well. And I know we've spoken on the phone a couple of times afterwards because you had some questions. I don't think I even helped you uh, in the end. Were you asking me about um, uh, putting a website up and stuff like that. Did the website get up in the end? Did you get that going in the end? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it done. It's um, yeah. You were a bit. You were a big help and a and a um, uh, a lot of lot of encouragement because I think I could have quite easily uh, given up with it. But uh, yeah, you, you gave me the encouragement to persevere. And we've got, I think I told you you'll end up swearing yourself, swearing at yourself a lot if, if you call that encouragement. <laughs> other people would have gone. I'm not going to bother if he says it's that bad. No, you. Um, so what's the website address? Would you like people to go there and have a look to to, to see? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. What's the address? It, it's it's. Um, uh, glendavisbooks.com glendavisbooks.com I'll tell you what I'll do I'll put that in the description if you look at the description oh, um, right. on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube um, in the description I'll put a, a link to that website if you didn't get it I'll also put a link to Amazon where you can get uh, Santa's disasters dis Santa's yeah. disaster you wouldn't think I talk for a living Santa's it's why I got sacked from so many radio stations um <laughs> Santa's Disastrous Delivery is what the book is called. And it, it really is just a ride, a riot. It's just wonderful. And it is a kid's book, but, you know, like you, I hope one day this is recognized for what it is and it becomes, you know, a, a TV show or an animated feature or something. But you know what? Even if somebody did... Um, you know, amateur dramatics and was putting on a Christmas review, this would be a good sketch to do for people. It's that, you know, not for kids, for grown-ups, you know what I mean? It is that good. It could it could transcend that if if somebody was interested. And if you did that, please, please tell Glenn and he'll tell you how much he'll charge you to license it. Don't just go ahead and do it, you know? Because you'll only blame me and I'll fall out with him. And... <laughs> We're getting on all right at the minute. Yeah. So so what's next for you, Glenn? I know you've sent me... Is it? Is it the... It's not the final draft, is it? Um, it's Grumps about the Grumpy Lollipop Man. You've sent me that. Yeah. Is that going to be the next thing you put out or will you do an audio book of Trevor the Tractor next? I think uh, uh, Trevor the Tractor's ready to go for you. Um, oh, great. Great. He's... Uh, Grumpy is still work in progress. That's another great idea. I mean, it's it's a grumpy lollipop man, but he's only grumpy to the grown-ups. <laughs> and and like the other two books, what you've done is, I think it's like within the first two or three sentences of, of what you sent me, you know exactly what this book is about. Because you've got a taxi driver... He's, you know, he's he's complaining, and then the, his his fares his fares complaining, and he says, "Can't you just, you know, go around him or something?" He says, "No, no, no," and he's all about, "No, no, this is grumps, you know." <laughs> Buses change their route for him. It's like which I which I think is a line. There's a very similar. There used to be a very similar line in the Reginald Mole husband. Um, That's right. It was an advert from years ago. Yeah, which has gone missing. So yeah, it's out there. Nick it. It, it worked, but it works so well. <laughs> Buses have changed their route for him, um, <laughs> and but he's like on the side of the kids. I think, I think when I spoke to you on the phone, was it yesterday or the day before? No, it was the day before. And uh, I said he's almost like a vigilante <laughs> lollipop man because he goes into battle for the kids. He's 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 in he's on the side of the kids against the grown ups, yeah. which is just brilliant. And because yeah. uh, the grown ups see him as a grumpy old man, but the kids think he's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, no, there's, no, uh, there's no viciousness nor no malice to him, but uh, no, 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 he's, no. Uh, 
Yeah, he's, 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 he has his little black book that everybody's terrified of being put in. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, that's all looking good. So you're going to be busy now. You're uh, a world famous author. And uh, <laughs> you've given up your otherwise, uh, your otherwise drab life, although I'm sure it had its moments. But, uh, but now it's fame and fortune all the way for Glyn Davies. The book is called Santa's Disastrous Delivery. It's the story of, of a disastrous delivery that Santa makes and things keep going more and more and more wrong. But it is, uh, it's a great story. There's some great characters. If you'd like to download the audiobook, there's links and everything in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. So check it out. Glyn Davies, good to talk to you. Thank you.